Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from LeetCode called Buildings with an Ocean View. This question is actually pretty straightforward once you know exactly what you're being asked. So what is it that we are being asked? There are n buildings in a line. You were given an integer or a height of size n that represents the height of the buildings in the line. The ocean is to the right of the buildings. A building has an ocean view if the building can see the ocean without obstructions. Formally, a building has an ocean view if all the buildings to its right have a smaller height. Return a list of indices, zero indexed, of buildings that have an ocean view sorted in increasing order. So we want to return all the buildings with an ocean view. And what that means is that these buildings can't have any obstructions. They can't have any building that is greater than equal to them in height to their right. And so if that's the case, they'll have an ocean view. Let's take a look at our examples. We have example one over here, heights four, two, three, one. So to visualize that, I'm gonna draw it out over here. We have four, two, three, one, and our ocean to the right over here. Which buildings have an ocean view? One, of course, has an ocean view. The rightmost will always have that ocean view. There's nothing obstructing it. Then we have three, and then we have four. So index zero, index two, and index three. Example two, we have four, three, two, one. So this visual over here, this is actually the best case scenario when all the buildings are in decreasing order. No building is blocking any building before it. So all these buildings have an ocean view. Index zero has an ocean view, one, two, and three. And example three, we have one, three, two, four. So one, three, two, four, this is actually going to be the worst possible scenario when the largest building is the rightmost building because that means it's blocking all the buildings before it. And so the only building with the ocean view is going to be the last building over here, which is index three. And we have some constraints over here. So how do we solve this? How do we find all the buildings with an ocean view? There are actually two ways to go about this. So feel free to pause the video and try it out yourself. If you aren't able to come up with any approach, try thinking of the most basic brute force approach. Chances are you'll likely discover a pattern that you can use to your advantage, or worst case, at least you have some working solution down. So how are we going to do this? Like always, we are going to start off with an example. We're gonna be using the following example. We have our heights over here and the indices of the buildings up here. And of course we have our ocean to the right. Now we wanna return all the buildings with an ocean view, which means we're gonna be returning all the building heights that are in decreasing order. For example, when we looked at example one, we were returning indices zero, two, three, heights four, three, and one. If they weren't in decreasing order, their view of the ocean would have been blocked. Example two, we return all these indices because they're all in decreasing order. And example three, we just return this index. This by itself, of course, is in decreasing order. There's nothing to the right of it. So by default, this is decreasing. So over here, we wanna find all the buildings that are in decreasing height order. If any building breaks that order, if it is not strictly decreasing, that means it's blocking the view of some building before it. And those buildings no longer have an ocean view. If we start at the beginning over here, for example, index zero, we know we are not blocking any building before us. We're the first building. So we're good over there. And if this is the only building we've seen so far, that means we're just going to say right now, we know no building is blocking us. So we have an ocean view. We're gonna add our index of building zero to this list that we wanna return in the end. Now we move down to index one, height four, and we wanna see if we maintain that decreasing order. We clearly don't, right? Four is greater than one. So this building no longer has an ocean view. It's blocked by this four. So we're gonna remove it from our list. And instead we're gonna add four because as of right now, it's not blocked by anything. So this building over here, sorry, not building four, building one, I'm gonna go by the indices to identify the buildings. Now we get to index two. This building has a height of two. Is it blocking any other building? Well, let's check, right? We check the buildings we already have. Building one has a height of four. It's greater than our own height. So we're not blocking anything. And we can actually just go ahead and add our own building to the list that we wanna return in the end. We haven't seen any building that blocks our own height yet. We go to building three. Again, same thing. We want to make a check. Are we blocking any building? So we're going to go to the last building we added and see if we are less than that building. We are. Our height is one. That height was two. 
So we're good. We don't actually even need to check any building before us because we know we're only going to store buildings with decreasing height. If we are smaller than the smallest height, of course, we're smaller than any other height before us, right? So we're going to go ahead and add building three over here. Now we go to building four and building four has a height of one. Let's go back and see if we're blocking anything. We go back to the last building we have, building three, and we see that we are not less than the height. We are equal to it exactly, which means we're going to be blocking this building and we need to remove that from our list. Well, now that this is removed, are there any other buildings we potentially need to remove? Let's go back here. Now we check the last building we have, which is index two, height of two. We're not blocking it, so we're good. We don't need to check any other building because if we're not blocking this building, we are for sure not blocking any building before it. Because again, this is all in decreasing order. So what we're going to do is just add our own building to this list. We go down to the last building. We have a height of three. Make a check. We are blocking this building, so this no longer has an ocean view. Now what's the last building? This one over here. We are blocking it, no ocean view, but we're not blocking this building over here, so that can stay. And all we do is add our own building to the list, which means we are going to return buildings at index one and index five. And that makes sense because they're the only ones with an ocean view. This one can view the ocean and this one can view the ocean. So let's go ahead and code this up and then we'll do a complete walkthrough with an example and also talk about the time and space complexities. All right, to code this up, I'm going to start off with a list of buildings that I want to return in the end. So I'm going to initialize buildings to be empty. And actually, let's use another input just so we can try out a couple examples. So say this is my input over here. These are my heights. These are my indices, my buildings and the ocean. So I just initialize a list of buildings to be empty. All I want to do at this point is just loop through all my buildings. So for I height in enumerate heights. If you haven't seen enumerate before, all it does is it gets the index as well as the value at that index for us. So it's going to be stored in height over here. So the first index is going to be zero and the first height is going to be four. What we want to do is see what the building we are on. If we are greater than equal to the last height we had in our list. If that's the case, we want to keep removing all the buildings we are greater than equal to up until that's no longer the case, at which point we add our own building to this list over here. So while buildings, while there are actually elements in our list and while the last element, the last index we have in buildings, so buildings of minus one is less than equal to our own height. That means that building is being blocked and it no longer has an ocean view. And to remove it, we're just going to pop it off. So buildings dot pop. All popping does is it removes the rightmost element in the list. Once that's complete, we just need to add our own index to the buildings list. So buildings dot append. And in the end, we return buildings. So how would this actually play out? We go in this for loop for the first time, index zero, height four. This is not going to be true. This is already false while buildings, there's nothing in here. So we exit out of this while loop and instead append our index to buildings. So we're going to add index zero, meaning right now we have an ocean view. We go back in the for loop. I is index one. Height is going to be two while buildings. This is true and buildings minus one. So the last element we have in buildings, which is index zero. And we actually want to get the height at this index. So we're going to do heights at this index zero. So four is less than equal to height. That's not true. We're not blocking any building. So we don't go in here and we just add our own index to buildings. So I'm going to go ahead and add one. We move down. We have index two, height three, while buildings is true and heights of buildings minus one. Buildings minus one is index one. What do we have at index one for height, which is two? Two is less than equal to our own height of three. So this building is being blocked and we can go ahead and pop it off from buildings. We go back in this while loop. There's still elements in our buildings. And now we see what the last most element is. It's index zero. What is height of index zero? That's four. Four is not less than equal to our height of three. So we don't need to remove it. It's not being obstructed. And we simply just add our building. We're going to be adding index two. Moving down to the very last index, index three, height five. Heights of buildings minus one. So buildings minus one is two. Heights at index two is three. Three is less than equal to our height. And so it's being blocked by that ocean view, which means we pop it off. 
we go back in our loop. Buildings minus one is index zero. Heights at index zero is four. Four is less than equal to five. So again, it's being blocked. So we pop it off. So we exit this while loop and we just add our own building to buildings. So we are adding three. Now we exit this for loop. There are no more buildings to iterate over and we return buildings, which just holds index three. This is the only building with an ocean view because this is the tallest building over here. Now talking about space and time complexity for the solution. For time, we are going through every single building and adding it onto our stack. And we are also potentially removing every single building from our stack at most once. So those are two operations that we're doing, right? Adding it onto the stack and removing it. But we're doing that at most once. Once it has been removed, we'll never check it again because it's not there to check. So in total, we are making two n operations if we have n buildings in our input, n buildings in total. Now, when doing time complexity, we never care about constants. So this is going to be O of n for time. And for space, we are maintaining a list of buildings that potentially holds almost all the buildings, whether or not we need to return them. So this is also going to be O of n if we have n buildings in our input. Now, let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now, I did say there were two approaches. We just went over one. Sometimes one is more intuitive than the other. It really depends person to person. But what is the second approach? Maybe you've already noticed it. Maybe this is the one you were trying to do. But let's take a look at, let's take a look at our original example, actually. So we're back to this example over here. We have our trusty ocean to the right and the following buildings. You may have noticed the rightmost building always has an ocean view. Now, in order for any other building to have an ocean view, it needs to be greater than this height. So what building is greater than height three? That is to the left of it. Well, that's building one here with a height of four. Now, for any other building to have an ocean view, it needs to be greater than this new max height we've come across, this new height of four. There is no building that does that. So our only output is going to be one and five, just like we had expected, right? And if you want to try that out with this example over here, this rightmost building, of course, always gets an ocean view. So we have three as our output. Now we just want to go right to left and see what our max heights are going to be. So right now the max height is one. Do we have any building that beats that? We do. This building over here has a height of three. It beats one. And so this building also has an ocean view and two is in our output. Now this one here doesn't beat three. This one does beat three. So this also has an ocean view. So our output is going to be zero, two, three which means all we need to do is start from our right and keep track of our max heights. So what would that look like coded up? It's actually going to be very similar. We're going to have a list storing all the buildings that have an ocean view. So we know for a fact, the rightmost always does, which means buildings is going to get length of heights minus one, that very last index. And our max height so far is going to be what we have at that very last index. So heights of minus one. We could do length of heights minus one or minus one. They both mean the same thing. And the value at that, of course, right now in this example is going to be three. So buildings is going to hold index five and max height is going to store value three. Now we want to loop right to left. We can do that with a for loop, a while loop, doesn't matter. Let's do a for loop. So for i in range, we want to start at our rightmost index. So we're gonna have length of heights minus one. What is our end index? It's not inclusive, so it's going to be negative one, meaning we go up to not including index negative one. And since we are moving down indices, we're gonna have a minus one. If you've never seen this notation before, all it is again is the same thing. We have a start index, a non-inclusive ending index, and optionally a way to signify how we want to move down our indices. So here is just going to be minus one. Right now, I is going to be index five. And actually, we can skip this because we know this always has an ocean view. So we can actually change this to be minus two, which means I is now at index four. And what do we want to do? We want to check if this height is greater than the max height we've seen so far. So height right now is going to be what we have in heights at the index we're on. So height is one. And we want to see if we are higher than the max height. So if height greater than max height. In this case, it's not. But if that were the case, we would add our index to buildings. So buildings dot append I and we'd update max height. So max height would now be this new height that we're on. 
Now, this is not the case. Our height of one is not greater than the max height of three. So we don't go in this if, and we just go back in this loop. One is not greater than max height. We can't go in this if, so we go back in the loop. At index two, height two, again, same thing. Height is not greater than max height. We go back. We're now at index one, height four. Height is greater than our max height. So we're going to append to buildings our index, which means it's going to get one. And we update max height to be this height, which means it's now going to be four. Now, any other building to the left of us that needs to have an ocean view has to be greater than this new max height. So we go back in this for loop, index zero, height one, if height greater than max height, this is not the case, so we don't go in here. And there's nothing else for us to loop over either. So now we wanna return. But there is one small problem you may have already noticed. Our indices are not sorted in increasing order. They're in reverse order because we were moving right to left. So all we need to do is just reverse that and return it. So what we're gonna do is return buildings, buildings colon colon minus one. This is simply syntax to reverse any list. Now let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talking about time and space complexity, for time, what are we doing? We're looping through all of our buildings once. So if we have n buildings, that's an O of n operation. And then we are reversing our buildings. So that's another O of n operation, which means overall time is going to be O of n if we have n elements in our input. Now for space, if we don't want to include our final output as the space that we take up, then this is actually going to be constant O of one. The only thing we're keeping track of is max height. And the only buildings we actually ever store in our list are the ones we want to return. So we can argue this is constant for space O of one. Now, we just went ahead and solved buildings with an ocean view in two different ways. If you have any questions with either approach, let me know down below. If this video is helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.